Hey, we're back with another lick of the week, and we're still exploring blues ideas in the context of scrub style. And I think I'm going to leave the number one, or the otherwise known as F shape, because I think I've given you enough basic ideas here that you should be able to decipher most of the scrub licks you hear that are based on this chord shape. Uh, remember to practice your blues scale notes, the B flat pentatonic played across a G, and uh, for that position, then you can move it around anywhere on the neck and reproduce licks. So hopefully you'll decipher these classic solos, hear the licks based on that shape, absorb those, and then do your own variations, and eventually maybe even come up with your own licks, which is very cool, and that's your, your ultimate goal. Uh, but make sure you absorb the ideas from the classic players, because those will be the foundation for all the licks you play in Scruggs style. Let's move to the bar chord because there's a couple of interesting ideas that you hear and there's only a handful of ideas that you typically hear played out of a bar chord in Scruggs style that are blues licks. So instead of playing the exercise of finding the blues scale notes across the position, which you're welcome to do on your own, I think I'm just going to make this video a little, little more simplistic by just showing you the licks themselves and we'll identify where the blues notes are. Here is the position bar chord at the 12th fret has the same notes as your open G because it's the halfway point. So that's where all the notes of the banjo repeat. So here is the classic position for the bar chord and this is the most prevalent lick I know in Scrug style for a bar chord that is a blues lick. That's a mouthful. <laughs> okay, what makes this position sound bluesy? Well, the first string at 12 belongs to the bar chord. Okay, we know since that's an octave higher, that, that's a D note. The second string at 12, out of the bar chord, would be a B note. Same as open, just an octave higher. So, when Earl or Sonny or any of these classic Scrooge players played this position, the reason this position sounds bluesy is yes, it's based on a bar chord, but it's been modified. By moving the B string back one half step, you've turned it from a B into a B flat. What is B flat in relation to G? A blues scale note. Remember out of this shape, the third fret, third string was our B flat note. Well, here at the bar chord position at 12, we have to move back to the 11th fret to find that same B flat note. So, now what can we do with this position? Well, the classic thing to do would be play the Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll over that. Two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. Two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. Two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. So let's play, the, uh, play that with the metronome. I've got mine set at about ooh, 80 beats a minute. And I'm going to play that roll. Besides the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. Well, you could play your own roll patterns over that, but the main thing is that you're including a B flat note and mixing it in with a note out of the bar chord. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, another classic idea is to pinch and uh, choke this position. Remember, choke is just the same thing as a bend. It's a bluegrass term to refer to a bend that you would hear you know, somebody play on a guitar to inflect blues. We can do the same thing at the 11th fret. I can actually take that B flat note and choke and release and pinch at the same time. I can add the fifth string. So that's another commonly heard vehicle for this position is to choke pinch, and then mix that in with roll patterns. So let me fire the metronome up again at 80. And I'm going to play the uh, Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll and then break into some choke patterns. By 
itself, it may sound a little strange, but if you play this against, uh, say, a guitar player playing a G chord or another banjo playing a G, then you'll start to hear how this sounds bluesy, all because of the one note, the B flat note. Now, you may notice the fingering I'm using for this position is index on the second, ring on the first, and this is also referred to as the Sally Gooden or the Cumlin Gap position. Now, if I move that position back down here to 8 and 9, then I have a partial number 2 G position or the number 2 chord shape. So it allows your index and your middle finger to move around. So some of the classic solos you hear that include this lick will eventually resolve to this. So I'm playing a blues lick for G and it'll eventually wind up back with G major so that you can inflect a blues idea and then take the same two notes or same two positions I should say for those notes and move them down to something that sounds major. So let me play the, the lick and then I'll resolve it to a G using the same two note positions. Specific, mm, it's hard to say, lick, which means you can reproduce this lick anywhere on the neck using the same roll patterns, uh, same chokes. So this is a bar G. If we went to a bar C, and again, the only string to watch out for is the open fifth or any open string. So we know the open fifth will work for C. So I can reproduce the same ideas for C by modifying the bar chord shape at uh, five. So I'm going to take this E note and turn it into an E flat note, which gives me a blue scale note for C. And play the same roll pattern, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. I can also pinch and choke. Again, we can move it anywhere we want. Here's the bar D at 7. Again, the fifth string in D can sound really bad because uh, there is some dissonance that happens. Yikes. But sometimes it can be cool if we don't harp on these two notes together. So as long as we don't pinch those notes together or play them too many times together, we can actually get some pretty cool dissonant licks. So this is a blue scale note for D that has dissonance added. So it's not too bad, it's not offensive if we don't harp on that dissonance too long. So this is a classic lick that you need to add to your repertoire and remember it's a bar chord that has one blue scale note added. For G, it would be B flat. But you don't even know, need to know the name of the note just for practice purposes. Just remember to move the second string back, and you'll be modifying a bar chord to play blue scale notes. So I'm going to just play around with this position as the video runs out, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.